chapter 60, starting in verse 1, I believe that God gave me a word here this morning. And it's going to speak to somebody here in this place. Isaiah 60, starting in verse 1. There the word of God says this. Arise, Jerusalem, and let your light shine for all to see. Come on, tell your neighbor, God's going to lift you up. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will see, will come to see your radiance. This morning I want to talk to you about a message and it's called Shift to Shine. And before you have your seats, tell two people, the glory of the Lord is on you. And you guys can have your seats here this morning. The glory of the Lord is on you. I love this scripture because it says this, that darkness as black as night covers the nations of the earth. And how I many know it doesn't take long for us to turn on the news or to look into society and we can see that things are getting darker. But I love that little word right there and it says, but. How I many know we are not controlled by circumstances we're not controlled by our situations. But I'm know when we gave our lives to Jesus, we became a part of another kingdom. And it says this, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. See, the secret to a person's success often appears to be an elusive quality. The University of Chicago did a five-year study of leading athletes, artists, and scholars to determine what made them successful. Have you ever looked at somebody and said, what makes them successful? I look at people and say, man, why are they successful? What's making them prosper? What's making them succeed? Conducted by Dr. Benjamin Bloom, the research was based on anonymous interviews with the top 20 performers in various fields, including a variety of professionals such as concert pianists, Olympic swim swimmers, tennis players, sculptors, mathematicians, and neurologists. Bloom and his team of researchers probe for clues as to how these higher achievers developed. For a more complete picture, they also interviewed their families and teachers. The report stated conclusively that drive, determination, and desire, not great natural talent, led to the extraordinary success of these individuals. And I don't know about you, but when I read research like that, I say, man, that's good news. Because I don't know about you, I don't have a lot of natural talents. How about you? Maybe you got all the talent in the world. But when I look at my life, I say, man, I don't got a lot of natural talent. You know, when I look at, uh, you know, what God, people that God is raising up nowadays, I say, man, they got a lot of talent. But I also love the quote when it says this, hustle beats talent when talent don't hustle. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Hustle beats talent when talent don't hustle. And I love that research because it gives me a little bit of hope. Because it says this, that if I have drive, if I have determination, and if I have desire, I can succeed. You know, all it takes is a little bit of drive. All it takes is a little bit of desire. And in the kingdom of God, you can succeed. See, the decision you make today will determine the story you will tell tomorrow. Can I ask you something here this morning? At the end of 2023, what story are you going to tell? Because I know we're all going to tell a story. What kind of stories will you be able to tell in your next season? Are there going to be stories of, man, I faced adversity, but I overcame? Are there going to be stories where I faced hardships, but I came out better? Are there going to be stories of wins or are there going to be stories of losses? Because how many of you know we're always going to tell the story of our last season? And I don't know about you, but I want to end 2023 and say, man, I answered the call of God. I did what God called me to do. And maybe it was hard. Maybe it was difficult. But I still stuck in. How about you? What story are you going to tell 
in your next season. Have you ever found yourself in a situation or in a season in your life where you were convinced that you had to change? Yeah, I mean, oh, God knows a, a way of putting us with our back against the wall. Has God ever put your back against the wall? And you found yourself in a situation where you said, man, I'm either going to change or I'm going to sink. I'm either going to swim or I'm going to drown. Can I tell you when this happened to me recently, lately? It happened to me in a McDonald's drive through oh <laughs> I was sitting there looking at the menu, didn't know what to order. I'm just kidding. It happened to me in a McDonald's drive through right there in Panama. Now, for you, maybe that doesn't mean much. But for me, it means a lot. Because me and my family were privileged and honored and blessed to be in, in Panama for a season. But me and my family don't speak Spanish. Hello. Okay, see, I'm going somewhere with this. I remember when I first got to Panama, I thank God for the team. They gave me some good advice. They said, hey, um, you know, when you go out, make sure you go out with people. Make sure you go out with a translator. Make sure you go out with an interpreter. And I was cool with that for maybe a couple months. But I mean, oh, you can't keep me caged up. <laughs> it was one of those nights I said, man, I'm going to go out somewhere with my wife. I'm going to go out somewhere with my daughter. And we said, you know, we're just going to get out of the house. We're going to go see the city. So we said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to stop right there at McDonald's and order some food. So I'm right there, and it, I love my daughter. How many of you got kids here this morning? Don't tell her I'm telling you this story, okay? I love my daughter, but my daughter is very particular in what she eats. How many of your kids are very particular? Hello. You're probably sitting right next to them. My daughter is very particular in what she eats. So I'm right there, and we're in McDonald's, in the McDonald's drive-thru, and it's easy to order for me, and it's easy to order for my wife, because I just said, numero dos uh, with a Coca-Cola uh, medium. I don't know. Horrible Spanish, yeah. <laughs> Number tres, uh, Big Mac, Big Mac with a soda. But when it came to ordering for my daughter, she wanted barbecue sauce. For my daughter, barbecue sauce was the make or break of the meal. She said, I want chicken nuggets, but with barbecue sauce. And if I didn't get the barbecue sauce, my daughter wouldn't eat. So there I am, 35 years old, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a missionary, I'm anointed, called by God, and I don't know how to order barbecue sauce. Some of you guys speak Spanish and you still don't know how to say barbecue sauce. How do you say barbecue sauce? Something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there I am in the line, I'm ordering for my daughter, I pull out Google Translate, hurry, 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 look at barbecue sauce. I didn't think it gave me an answer. So I went to the window and I told him, uh, salsa, they are all about salsa. <laughs> but it was in that moment in the McDonald's drive through in Panama where I realized in this new season, I got to learn some new things. Have you ever been in a season where you know in this new season, you better learn some new things? And it was right there in that drive through at McDonald's where I realized, man, in this season that God brought me into, what got me to this season is not going to get me to the next season. And it was right there in that drive through where I said, man, I'm going to start learning some Spanish. I started listening to uh, Spanish worship. I started listening to Spanish preaching. And, uh, you know, I didn't learn a lot of Spanish. I can't touch for like Jana. But I can say this, by the time I left Panama, I learned a lot more Spanish than I knew in that McDonald's drive through Have you ever been in a season where you said this new season is going to require a new me? Right? That was me right there in the McDonald's parking lot. But I got good news for somebody here this morning is that the good news is this, is that you may be here this morning and facing some challenges and facing some difficulties, but I got some good news is that God still wants you to shine. God still wants you to succeed. God still wants you to prosper. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. 
Because the Bible clearly says it. How many of the Bible says he wants you to prosper? Yes, I'm not saying you're not going to face challenges. I'm not saying you're not going to face some adversity. But I'm here to tell you as a matter of fact that God wants you to shine. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Because in Deuteronomy 28 verse 9, the word of God says this. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you. And as, as his holy people, as he swore he would do. Then all the nations will see, somebody say see, that you are people claimed by God. And when I was looking at the verse, I said, it doesn't say that the people will hear. How many of us one thing to hear, oh, man, that person's doing good. Or that person, man, they're not on the streets no more and they're in the victory home or they're at the UTC and they're doing good. How many of us one thing to hear somebody's doing good? But how many know it's another thing to see somebody's doing good? And this verse says, they will see that you are doing good. And I thought, man, how are they going to know by looking that somebody is doing good? I thought about it and I said, man, our lives should communicate something. When they look at our lives, are they able to see, man, there's something different about you. When they look at your marriage, do they say, man, there's something different about your marriage. There's something different about your family. There's something different about how you conduct yourself. Because it says right here that the nation will see that you are called by God. And also it says that this, that they will stand in all of you. Check this out. The Lord will give you prosperity in the land he swore to his ancestors to give you. Blessing you with many children. Hello, somebody. Numerous livestock and abundant crops. You know, when I look at this portion of scripture, I say, man, God is good. Because when I look at this portion of scripture, I am convinced that God was setting up his people for blessings and prosperities. Ask me how I know. Because he gave them this promise before they went into the promised land. Okay, some of you guys didn't even catch that. God gave his people the wisdom. God gave his people the instructions. God gave his people the promise before they ever set foot in the promised land. What am I trying to say this morning is that God wants to set you up for your next season. That's what he was doing with the children of Israel. Now it would be one thing if he gave them the instructions when they were in the promised land. But he gave them the, the, the key to prosperity, he gave them the key to blessing before they even set foot in the promised land. How many know when I think about it, I said, man, God is a good God. Why? Because God knows where he's trying to take you. And he wants to get you there in a prosperous way. How many know sometimes we don't even know where we're going to be at next week? Hello? How many of you know sometimes you woke up this morning, you didn't even know what you were going to wear? But God, the Bible says that God is already in your future. God is already there preparing it for you. God already has a purpose for you. God already has a land of blessing for you. Right? God gave them the promise before the promised land. But I mean, sometimes in order for us to shine, there has to be a shift. Have you ever been in a season where you knew God was shifting you? You're probably there right now. (laughs) Hello. Hello. Some of you guys look real nervous because you know women's convention is coming up. Hello, somebody. Has God ever put you in a season where you knew that he was shifting you? Where you knew he was changing your place, changing your position, or changing your direction? But I love what this verse says because it says this. In order for you to shine, you got to rise. It doesn't say shine and then rise. It says in order for you to shine, you got to rise. Right? In order for our light to be brighter, our life has to be better. And I thank God for this promise. I thank God for how God works. Because, yes, even though God takes us through challenges, even though God takes us through difficulties, how many know God has a good purpose for us? I thank God that he wants to change me. Hello, how many of you guys think God to change you? Don't sit there and look all holy like you got it all together. I know God needs to change you. I'm up here to tell you I know that God needs to change my mind. He needs to change my heart. He needs to change my character. God needs to change me. But how many of you guys know he can do it? How many of you think God that we serve a God of change? When we look at this word arise, it means to stand up. Let me ask you this. What has been holding you back 
from you being who God wants you to be. Because in order for us to, God, for us to lift us up, he has to take us from one condition to a better condition. I'm here to tell somebody here this morning that God calls you more than a conqueror. How I many that's good news? Because before Jesus, you always took L's. Hello, somebody. <laughs> before Jesus, my life was filled with L's. But I thank God that the Bible says that we're more than conquerors. What does that mean? It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter what challenges in front of you. It doesn't matter what hill you got to climb. It doesn't matter where God is calling you. Maybe God is calling you to something big. But the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. But I mean, sometimes we got to conquer our circumstances. Have you ever been in the fire? Have you ever been in the storm? And sometimes it feels like that storm is going to overtake you. Hello, somebody. I know we got some super Christians here this morning. But have you ever been in some circumstances where the storm going on around you became the storm inside of you? Have you ever been in that circumstance? I know the Bible says rejoice. I know the Bible says praise. I know the Bible says thanksgiving. But because of the circumstances I'm in, it makes it a little difficult to do that. Or sometimes God wants us to rise out of our negative thoughts or emotions. See, the Bible says this, to take every thought captive. How many know just because a thought enters our mind doesn't mean it's a good thought? Let me talk to this side of the room. Just because you think something doesn't mean it's right. Maybe I'm the only one that's got to filter my thoughts. And say, oh, that thought's not of God. That thought don't line up with the word of God. That don't line up with what God says. But I believe that God wants us to rise up out of negative thoughts or emotions. How many know you get in the victory when you can sometimes have negative thoughts but still press forward? I love the word courage because you know what courage means? It doesn't mean the absence of fear. It means pressing forward despite fear. How many know God's getting a breakthrough when you can have fear and still press forward? When you can still have some negative thoughts and say, man, I'm going to take these thoughts captive. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. It doesn't matter what my thoughts are saying. It doesn't matter the voice inside my head. I'm going to do what God called me to do. And I believe sometimes another thing that God wants us to rise above is our habits. Tell your neighbor, you got some habits. I mean, sometimes God wants to take us out of habits. You know, I love this. It says, we don't rise to the level of our hopes. We fall to the level of our habits. I mean, we can have big dreams. We can have big vision from God. But if our habits don't line up with the vision, we're not going to make it. And sometimes God knows, hey, that habit you got, I got to take it out of you. Because that habit's going to hinder you in your next season. So what does God do? He takes you through trials. He takes you through, through challenges. He takes you through the fire. Why? Because he says, I need you to overcome some habits. But let me share with you real quick this morning some ways that I believe that God will, will, will lift you up, will make you rise up. One is challenges. I've been preaching about it already. Stretch. God will stretch us. But let me tell you this, is that sometimes when God puts you in challenges, how many know sometimes it can feel super awkward? Have you ever stepped into a challenge you knew that God put you in and you felt super awkward? Hello, that was me in Panama. Imagine being in Panama, some of you guys know what I'm talking about, and you don't speak Spanish. That's super awkward. Because it's like, you know, I want to go out to lunch with you, but what am I going to do, just sit there and stare at you? Maybe that's your personality, and you can sit there and have lunch with somebody and not say nothing. But for me, that's super awkward. But I knew that God sent me to Panama. I knew that God put me there. I knew that God put me in a place that I was outside my comfort zone. But let me tell you this. When I left Panama, I left with a different mentality. I left with a different tenacity. I left with a different fire inside my bones. Why? Because some of our b biggest growth seasons will be our biggest challenging seasons. But let me tell you this. Is that sometimes God brings a challenge to you and the first thing we want to do is run. Come on, keep it real this morning. 
Sometimes there's a challenge in front of us, and the first thing we want to do is run. Or sometimes we think we're going to go into a new season, and everything is going to be perfect. How about that one? We think, I'm just going to step into this new season, I'm going to step into this new role, and there's going to be no problems. You know, I think about this, I think about newlyweds. Hello. Any newlyweds here in the house? You know, when you, before you get married, you think, oh, it's going to be great. We're just going to be in love. We're just going to get along. And that lasts for like three weeks. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Can the married people say amen? You guys look at me like you got the perfect marriage. Or can I tell you another time that I've experienced this? Is that when I became a new parent. I mean, it was one thing to see the family picture on Instagram. You're like, wow, look at that beautiful family. But I love when people share the behind the scenes pictures. <laughs> the kids are fighting, they're wrestling each other, crying, boogers coming out their nose. But all they show you is the perfect picture. They show you, oh, it was great. But you don't know what it took to get that picture. Sometimes we could be like that in our new season. We see the perfect picture. And I mean, oh, there's a lot of things behind the scenes. You got boogers coming out your nose. Hello. You're fighting right there. But let me encourage somebody here this morning that although God has you in a challenging season and it doesn't look perfect, continue to run your race. James chapter 1 verse 3 says this, for you know that when your faith is tested, somebody say tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. No testing, no chance. I, I wish it wasn't like this. Sometimes God operates and I'm like, God, why do you do it like that? Because if I operate, if I was God, I wouldn't go through so many testings. Hello, somebody. But I love this, this scripture because it says, hey, when you're being tested, when you're going through the challenge, when you're being stretched, it's okay. Because it's an opportunity for growth. How I many of oh, that verse wasn't there, we'd be all tripping. Oh my God, why am I facing the fire? Why am I facing the battle? But I thank God for this verse. Because sometimes it's this verse that's going to get you through that season. It's that promise that's going to get you to the promised land. Because you can say, God, yes, I'm facing this, but I know that you got something better for me on the other side. I love this quote when it says this, facing difficulties is inevitable. How many know with God or without God, we're going to face difficulties. But I love what it says here. Is that learning from them is optional. Facing difficulties is inevitable. But learning from difficulties is optional. Have you ever been through a difficulty and you didn't learn nothing from it? You know some people like that. <laughs> they keep going through difficulties. The same difficulty they did for a few years. But they don't learn nothing. But I mean, no. Oh, for us to come out of a difficulty, and us for order to draw from this difficulty, we have to be intentional. We have to look at the problem and say, this is, yes, maybe this is a challenge, maybe this is a problem, but God, what are you trying to do in the challenge? Ask me how I know that problems are opportunities in disguise. Was a cross a problem? <laughs> when you look at the cross of Jesus, imagine you were one of Jesus' disciples. You just followed Jesus for three years, quit your job, left your family, put everything you had into the trusting and following Jesus. And then you're there and they arrest Jesus and they hang Jesus on a cross. Was the cross a problem? It was a problem. But I may know there's a God in heaven that knows how to turn problems into opportunities. Because the cross today is our victory. The cross today is why we succeed. The cross today is why we are forgiven. The cross looked like a problem, but it was really an opportunity. I mean, I believe the devil looked at the cross and said, I got him. But three days later, Jesus came out of the grave and said, yeah, you thought you had me. You thought you got the win. But I got the keys to the kingdom. I got the keys. How many guys can say amen? amen? And I want to encourage somebody here this morning, if you're facing a problem, could it be an opportunity? Another way that God will, will draw you and make you rise up is that God will open new doors. You know, I'm here this morning, I'm, it still blows my mind I'm part of Throwaway of LA. I'm like, how am I even preaching in Throwaway of LA? 
But I mean, oh, God will open up doors. God will open up new doors. See, in Psalm 75, verse 7, the word of God says this. God decides who will rise and who will fall. God knows who he's going to lift up and God knows who he's going to sit down. But God will open new doors that will bring new growth. I love this quote, and it says this, if you're at the head of the class, you're in the wrong class. <laughs> Have you ever been around somebody that was a little further along than you? I feel like this, don't tell nobody. Every time I get around Pastor Sonny, it's a little awkward. It's a little nervous. Have you ever get around our founder and be a little nervous? You, you should get nervous. <laughs> right? But I know that it's in the nervousness. It's in that challenge. It's in that awkwardness. It's in that uncomfortableness. It's in that new door that God has opened where there is an opportunity to grow. See, we got to get around people that make us uncomfortable. But I know sometimes people make you uncomfortable. You find new friends. But could it be that God put that person in your life? That person that makes you uncomfortable. Maybe it's your leader. Maybe it's somebody that's not like you. How many of we like to be around people that are like us? Then we get around people that are not like us and we're like, oh, this is different. This is weird. Let me go back over here. But could it be that God put you in that circle that makes you uncomfortable? Why? Because it's in that circle of awkwardness. It's in that circle of a weirdness where God wants you to go to a new level. God can put you in a position that will pull you out of your comfort zone. How I many know oh, he, he's a master at doing that? He'll put you in a position that will get you out of your comfort zone. How I many know oh, you, you know your leader is going to call you out, hey, testify or say this, and we run away. We hide in the back. But sometimes it's in those new doors where God can take us to new levels. And let me tell you this here this morning, another way that I've experienced God take me to new levels it's sometimes through failure. I know I'm in a room where nobody fails. <laughs> I know I'm in a room where everybody's perfect. But let me tell you this, is that sometimes our best lessons come through our hardest lessons. Have you ever made a mistake and found out I'm never going to do that again? And I thank God that God is a God of grace. I thank God that God is a God of mercy. Because even though sometimes we fail, even though sometimes we mess up, how many know that doesn't shortcut the process? How many guys thank God for that? See, sometimes failure is a productive part of success. It provides a road you don't have to travel again. The mountain you don't have to climb again. And the valley you don't have to cross again. First time is a mistake, but the second time is a decision. In Psalms 119, verse 67, the word of God says this, I used to wander off until you disciplined me. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Everyone ever been disciplined by God? But how many know, I thank God that the word of God says this, that whom God loves, he disciplines. Whom God loves, he disciplines. And sometimes we got to see it through the eyes of God and say, okay, God, if you're putting some hands on me, if you're getting me in a season of correction, if you're getting me in a season where I'm getting all chopped up, hello, somebody, I'm getting rebuked, it's a season for growth. Have you ever been there before? If you haven't, you're about to be. <laughs> Don't worry. It's coming. But sometimes we can, say, we can look at what God has taken us through and we won't see it through the right eyes. We say, man, why they was correcting me? Well, he's got something to say. But sometimes that's what God is doing to pull something new out of you, to pull something fresh out of you, to pull a new you out of you. Can anybody say amen? Because God is less interested in what you're doing than he is in what you are becoming. Sometimes we just focus on doing for God. But God is not really concerned about what you do for him. God is more concerned about who you are for him. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen like God took you through the ringer, like God took you through this trial, like God took you through a trial in order to change your character. Has God ever took you through some challenges in order to change your character? But I got good news for somebody here this morning. In Matthew 5, 16, the word of God says this, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. 
How many know the devil wants to keep you hidden? Just stand in the corner. Don't say nothing. Be quiet. Don't be loud. Be like everyone else. Hey, you see that crowd? Go ahead and blend into it. Blend into the crowd. It's okay. But Matthew 5, 16 says this. Let your good deeds shine. Tell your neighbor, let your good deeds shine. Come on, it's okay to shine for God. It's okay to be different for God. It's okay to be uh, peculiar for God. Why? Because the Bible says this, that everyone will see your life and it will bring praise to God. How many know sometimes the world wants to put you in a box? But I many know God wants you to stand out of the box. God wants you to be different. God wants you to be unique. Why? Because the word of God says this, that when people see your lives, it will bring glory to God. Maybe as the worship team comes up, I want to remind somebody here this morning that it's okay to be different. It's okay to be unique. It's okay when everyone else is thinking negative for you to think positive. When everyone around you is filled with doubt or filled with depression, it's okay for you to say, man, God's going to show up. God's going to show off. God's going to break open. God's going to open some new doors. It's okay for you to be different. And I believe that God sent me here this morning because maybe you're in that season that feels peculiar. <laughs> and you say, man, am I in God's will? If I was in God's will, why would I be taking L's? If I was in God's will, why wouldn't it be so challenging? <laughs> Hello. I don't know where you find yourself here this morning. Maybe on the mountain of blessing. Maybe everything's going great for you. Well, praise God. But I believe that there's some people here this morning that you're where God wants you to be at, but it's challenging. You're where God wants you to be, but you're facing adversity. And I want to remind somebody here this morning that these are ways that God takes us from one level to the next level. I don't want to encourage somebody here this morning not to throw in the towel, not to turn back on your calling, not to say, man, I'm not going to do this. I want to encourage somebody here this morning that all oh, you're facing the fire, maybe you're getting rebuked, maybe somebody's dealing with you, you're right where God wants you to be. And if you don't quit, you're going to go into your next season and say, man, God's hand was all over that season. Even though that season was challenging, even though that season was difficult, you're going to see the handprint of God on that season. And you know the good news about serving God? Is that we can come out of challenges and say, I came out wiser. I came out smarter. <laughs> I came out closer to God. How many know the world doesn't have that hope? The world just faced challenges. They're just facing hardships. They're just going through the trial. They're just taking L's. But I mean, oh, when we serve God, the king, the, the king of heaven, the king of kings, we're able to say, man, I came out of this season a little bit wiser, a little bit smarter, a little bit stronger. Can anybody say, man, let's all stand our feet here this morning. But the word of God says this. Darkness covers the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises upon you. You know what that verse is saying? It's saying this. It's, it's not our talents that are going to let us shine. It's not our gifting that's going to make us shine. It's not our circumstances that are going to make us shine. But the way that we're going to shine is because we're connected to God. How many know when you're connected to God, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter who's coming against you. Because the Bible says this, if God is for us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter who's trying to stop you. It doesn't matter who's trying to oppose you. Because it says the glory of the Lord is going to rise upon you. How many know they can't stop God? If it's God planned, it's going to be done. But the key is for us to understand that the reason I'm shining is because of God's glory. 
The reason I'm doing good is because of God's glory. The reason I'm still sober is because of God's glory. The reason I'm still married is because of God's glory. The reason I'm still running my race is because of God's glory. And sometimes it's in the challenge where the devil will whisper in your ear <laughs> and make you take your eyes off God and put them on the problem. But I believe that God wanted to lift some eyes here this morning. I believe God wanted to shift some perspective here this morning. Come on, as we worship for the next few moments.